Richmond. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this session on TV Everywhere. I'm Will Richmond, and uh, delighted to have all of you here to talk about TV Everywhere. I'm guessing that most of you have heard the term TV Everywhere, or at least you've heard it now multiple times over the past two days or so. Uh, but TV Everywhere is a very exciting concept that essentially allows content to be untethered from the set-top box, from the living room where it's always uh, resided, to now be able to be delivered to various devices and platforms and other ways that consumers uh, want to receive content now. So we're excited to have four great uh, speakers with us today with whom we're going to kind of investigate all the different aspects of TV everywhere. Uh, and we're going to do a few interesting demos um, and talk a little bit more about where the uh, TV everywhere world is going. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce our first guest, Ron Frankel, who is the CEO of Cinecore. Hello, Ron. So you guys have been really on the front lines of TV everywhere, and you've introduced a new service here at the cable show. Why don't you give us a little bit of background, tell us a little bit about what the strategy is and what the product is all about. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the first part of the strategy is just to get it launched. I mean, I really think uh, it's a, an opportunity for the cable industry to uh, take back uh, share from over the top. I mean, in a funny way, it's the, it's the cable industry's open opportunity to disrupt what's already happening on the web. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, I'd like to demonstrate a little bit of it, uh, of, of actually the, the product uh, that we've recently launched with uh, Suddenlink. Great. Uh, my associate, Greg, uh, will uh, bring it up. Um, and, and just to put you, this in, into yep. perspective, um, what, what my company does is we, we do, we have integrated the authentication uh, and mediation to the back office systems of over 40 cable companies and telcos. Uh, and it enables a wide range of online services to be packaged with uh, act, inter either internet access or television. So this is an example of, of Suddenlink's portal, uh, where we will uh, we have as part of the portal uh, a, a video portal, uh, which demonstrates the, the TV everywhere elements. Um, and one of the key elements, and you can see it uh, in this um, uh, amber uh, spot under full movies, is uh, the conditional access, meaning if you're logged in, you can uh, you can then maybe get the pro get the assets, see the content, or if you're not, uh, then you uh, then you know you'll see what you can or can't get that's for free. Um, and so in this case, uh, Greg is going to log in, and um, and at, at once he logs in, the uh, you'll see that the access is all enabled. Uh, so I think he's going to play an episode of Seinfeld. So this is uh, these are some assets that were uh, delivered from uh, TBS, yeah, uh, Turner Broadcasting, uh, to enable the play of Seinfeld online. Um, and in this case, uh, it's um, and then he'll it'll enable access to a wide range of the assets okay. that that TV Everywhere would enable. Yeah. And tell us more specifically about what Cinecore is doing here. What What's your layer relative to where the content is coming from and yeah. the controls? So that's one of the opportunities, really. Um, right now, the content is, is being delivered in multiple formats uh, from multiple sources. Uh, HBO, for instance, is uh, storing the assets. Uh, in the case of TBS, they've delivered the assets to us. Uh, and and uh, Epix is, is uh, storing their own assets. And so what we really provide is a search, a very robust search and discovery experience. And then the business rules, the conditional access, so that if uh, somebody has rights to HBO uh, in their cable system, then they have the right to view the material on HBO Go, either, uh, either on their PC or on multiple devices. Mm -hmm. And the cable operator is determining, again, what's included, what's not included, what the policies are around yeah, each specific piece of content right. it, using the Cinecore tools. Yes. Uh, the, both the programmer has, uh, has a set of business rules uh, and the cable company has a set of business rules. Yep. So in this case, if, you're, if you basically have the right to the channel, then you have the right to the channel online and other devices. So then the question is how do you couple the, that rights profile so that the system knows 
that the person who's viewing that material uh, is is the right person, has the rights. Yeah. And so I we see. provide all of that technology, as well as this front end uh, to make sure that consumers have a very easy experience with it. Very, very simple experience. And I see that we're now competing with Seinfeld, which even without volume might trump us in terms of interest. Yes, so I wanna... think that's right. So maybe we <laughs> want to... Uh... So M move are, to it. Yeah. Is there more on the demo that you want uh, to go through, or you want to explain well, to us? Well, you can see now that uh, on the full movies, where previously there was a yellow lock, there's now a green lock, green unlocked, and that means that you now have access. So it's really we've we've this is real time, a live product. So we've pinged the databases of, of Suddenlink to ensure that this person, in fact, has the rights to view that material online on other on other platforms. Okay. Um, and in our view, the strategy is to get as much of it out as possible to make good on the promise. So, I, you know, look, I, we, we, we had a little chat before. I'll relate, relate the story about my daughter. So I, I have three, uh, three teenagers. I got them all debit cards. I was sick of seeing the iTunes bills on my, on my credit card. So I, one of them wanted $100 a month. So I said, okay, Kate, 15-year-old daughter, $100 a month. So I, uh, she, 10 days later, she says to me, I spent all the money. Daddy, I, you know, where's, you know, I, I need more money. I said, well, Kate, I can't give you any more money, but let's figure out what you spent it on because you have an online, uh, you know, an online ledger. So she spent $45 on iTunes, about a third, a third, a third, movies, television shows, and songs. If TV Everywhere were here in full, I would have said to her, Kate, if you just went over here to Suddenlink to go or whoever our cable portal provider was, yep. you'd get all this stuff for free. So it also carries the promise of actually making, of creating value, of making the access to content more economically viable for households, generally speaking. So I think the promise is huge, and the winners and losers are far from, far from being determined at this point in time. So the idea is rather than have Steve Jobs get the $45 per month of your daughter's uh, allocation, have the cable industry get that, but in a sense already have received it in the form of their subscription. So it's not a double That's count right. to the subscriber. That's absolutely right, in the form of value. And of course, Steve Jobs won't hurt much because the Apple devices are most likely the devices it'll be viewed from. Right. And the devices are beautiful. I think the device business will flourish. Yeah. But it might be that iTunes would grow a little less fast. Yeah. Or it might be other streaming services might grow a little less fast. Yeah. Or they might see alternatives that would actually be less expensive through the cable uh, industry uh, than when you aggregate all of these sources of content purchases would otherwise be. Now take us into the a little bit further into the mindset of a 15-year-old uh, girl, your daughter. Um, she's obviously facile with being able to access content through iTunes on whatever iOS device. How do you think she will feel about instead of using the Apple device of her choosing, instead using the portal that Cinecore or someone else has created and what kind of transition might that entail for her? Well, she can still use the Apple device of her choosing. She can still because use she can access it. It's a it's URL. It's a it's right. a web-based service. Right. Uh, as long as there's internet access, she can get the stream. Yeah. And I think I think she would go anywhere on the web possible to find Glee. Okay. So it doesn't matter where or what, as long as it's the content. Content. It's the that's content. King. Content yeah. is king. Yeah. And and I just think we have to make the access so much easier. Yeah. And this is a product, our, our, our product line is really an end-to-end -end solution that makes the user interface yeah. very simple for users of all ages, very easy to use, and once there's enough content out there, I'm confident yeah. that this can be a tremendous win for the cable industry. Right. So the question becomes, how? what are the key challenges to getting yeah. all that content out there, right? That's what you're saying, the yeah, key success factor is, how do we make it happen? Absolutely. It has to be a, 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 a enough content that consumers would would understand that it was their key destination online. So we've integrated with Hulu, uh, HBO, Epix, uh, Turner, E Entertainment, but you know there are 40 other channels that need to be integrated. 40 other cable networks. Plus, you know, you think broadly about what the potential is. There are live game products from Major League Baseball and National Hockey League and and, and National Basketball Association. There's a wide variety of content that can be aggregated into this holistic viewing experience online, really all provided by the cable industry. Yep. If the programmers were so motivated to uh, accelerate 
the uh, deployment of these services. And what is Cinecor doing or what might others do to help increase that motivation level? Well, I mean, one is just to dr drive usage and sampling. Yep. Um, we have a unique approach in that because the video uh, is within the portal, that's already a, a start page for many of, of the subscribers of our partners, of our, of our cable company partners, we can promote uh, sampling on the page. So on the front page, and you can see Flight of Concords is promoted, we can promote you know, a wide variety of the content and drive trial. Yep. And, and you know, the, there's, but you have to have enough bulk to have there be the kind of content that, that folks would drive to see, yep. that they want to see online and, 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 or in, in any venue, uh, so, or on any screen. Um, and so I think by a combination of promotion and trial, uh, folks will come to learn that these, their credentials have a lot of value. And then, of course, we have a very, uh, uh, a very comprehensive search and discovery experience, mm -hmm. um, which where we've aggregated all the metadata across uh, all of the networks that we have integrated, so the consumers can easily find their material. It doesn't; they don't have to go out to the web uh, if they don't want to. They could also find it from the web, but mm -hmm. um, but it, it makes it you know the, the goal being a very very simple uh, user experience, yep. enabling a very rich uh, consumption of content. Yep. Where are we if TV ever is a, compared to a baseball game? Are we still in the first uh, we're, inning, we're, top of the first, yeah, we're, nobody uh, out yet? What's very the... early. I, I, think, uh, I think it's still going to be a couple of years yet before we have all of the programmers online. I think there are the, these you know, contractual relationships, as we all know, are quite complicated. Yep. Uh, I think there are lots of good people who are working toward addressing the need and, and desire on the part of consumers for TV everywhere. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's going to take, take some time yet. Um, but I, I think we're probably in the second inning. Okay. I think we've seen some, some good examples of, of, of user experiences uh, and a wide variety of content that's available uh, on these platforms, yep. uh, combined with, uh, you know, combining Hulu with a number of the premium networks. I think we'll see some critical mass really uh, start to be achieved in the net within the next 12 months. I think it'll take a couple of years to get, to get everything settled. Speaking of time, we're just about out of time. Let me ask you the last question. If we're still in the maybe first or second inning, flash forward a year from now, what inning do you think TV Everywhere will be in by that point? Well, I think in large part it depends on the, on the business arrangements. Okay. Um, from a technology perspective, I think we'll be ready to go. Okay. Uh, and in fact, from a technology perspective today, uh, we could aggregate and integrate all of the various partners and, and programmers uh, to create a very, uh, very um, compelling experience. Uh, but I think it's really about the programmers and the, and the, and the uh, MSOs uh, coming together to make sure that the agreements are in place to enable the distribution of the material. Okay. And, and, and hopefully some of the complexities will ease. Uh, and and uh, so that would be my, uh, my, my principal objective. All right. Thank you for Ron uh, stopping by the park today. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you, Rob, this way. Nice to see you.